What's going on gardeners? It's Saturday, July 9th, and today I'm going to show you how to stop a fruit fly infestation in your house that are so common this time of year. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're like me, you probably have a spot on the end of your counter somewhere that you dedicate for storing fresh produce that doesn't do well in the refrigerator and I do I store my fresh produce from the grocery store all year on the edge of my counter right here however during this time of year it gets filled up with fresh tomatoes from the garden sometimes it's practically overflowing when I'm in the heart of tomato season here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina in mid-June now most of the year I don't have any issues with the produce I store on my countertop here but like clockwork in the heart of the growing season, it is only a matter of time before we get some kind of big, awful fruit fly infestation and I wake up and there are fruit flies all over this area. And that happens for a very specific reason. Most of the year, it's just too cold to support the natural fruit fly life cycle of laying and hatching eggs. But in the summer, because it's so warm, that fruit fly reproductive cycle gets shot into overdrive and they start reproducing and hatching like crazy. Also by this time of year, most of my tomato plants that I planted way back in late March are pretty much dead, and because the heavy rains have moved in, I have a lot of split fruits that are rotting. And around those rotting fruits, it is typical to see fruit flies buzzing everywhere and feasting. While garden tomatoes are incredibly delicious, they are far from perfect. They usually have all kinds of little cracks and imperfections on them, and they are the perfect places for these fruit flies to lay their eggs. So it's only a matter of time until you bring in some fruits from your garden that have fruit fly eggs in them, and one day you will just wake up and they will have hatched and there will be fruit flies everywhere. When these fruit flies take over your kitchen, it can be extremely annoying, but luckily it's just as easy to kill them as it is for them to have their initial takeover of your kitchen. And you really only need three ingredients, some dish soap, a sweet fruit-based vinegar of your choice, and a shot glass. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of the susceptible fruits off the counter because we don't want the fruit flies to preferentially lay and nest in them and keep producing uh, with the reproductive cycle. So we are going to temporarily relocate all of our susceptible fruits to a paper bag and then once they're relocated we're going to scrunch up that bag so no fruit flies can get in unsusceptible produce can still stay up there. So I still have my zucchini and my avocados up there. If you have something like a watermelon that there's no way that a fruit fly could get into, you could leave that up there as well. You only really need to remove the soft susceptible fruits that the fruit flies love. Now we're going to fill up our shot glass to the rim with a fruit-based vinegar. And it's very important that you use a fruit-based vinegar because remember, these are fruit flies. They are attracted to the natural sugars in fruits. So you can't use something like a distilled vinegar. I've had a lot of success with balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, or apple cider vinegar. And I would recommend that, um, that you would use either one of those. You can use more expensive vi vinegars like cherry vinegar and pomegranate vinegar, but why waste the money on them? Uh, red, red wine vinegar is usually the least expensive, so that is usually my go-to. Now you'll notice that I filled the shot glass very close to the rim, but not entirely to the rim. And that's because I need to add a drop or two of dish soap to the shot glass. And this is for a very specific reason. Water has a significant amount of surface tension. That's why you can slightly overfill water to the point where it will actually come up over the rim. And this surface tension is enough for many bugs to actually walk on. A lot of these bugs can walk on water. So if you let your fruit flies land inside of the vinegar as is, there's a chance they can get up and fly away. But if you add a drop or two of dish soap, that takes all the surface tension away from the water. And remember, vinegar is 95% water. So if you place a little bit of dish soap like this, anytime a fruit fly will land on top of it, they will sink right down. Now that the dish soap has been added, we are going to fill it to the surface tension level. And that right there is perfect. Now I'm going to place that shot glass that is full of a fruit-based vinegar and soap over to the problem area where the fruit flies are congregating. And I'm also going to place this bunch 
of brand new bananas right next to it because the brand new bananas are not yet susceptible to the fruit flies, but the scent may draw them over. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that shot glass full of that sweet cider vinegar or your sweet fruit based vinegar is the most attractive thing. And what's going to happen is um, the overwhelming majority of the fruit flies are going to try and land on the rim of the shot glass and they're going to try and drink the vinegar and the vinegar is either going to kill them or they will land on top of the actual water and they will sink because of the dish soap. And over a couple of days, this is going to collect almost all of the fruit flies. So all you want to do is every morning, you just want to come and you want to check on your, uh, your shot glass of vinegar because eventually it's going to start evaporating every morning. It'll be maybe uh, half a centimeter or so uh, down from evaporation. So you'll just want to keep topping it off until all of the fruit flies are gone. These two shot glasses have been on my counter for four days now, and the one on the left is filled with balsamic vinegar. The one on the right is filled with the red wine vinegar, just because I wanted to show that they are both effective. Now I want to show you how many fruit flies these two shot glasses have caught over the four days. All right, let's dump the red wine vinegar right here. Ugh. Oh, there's still a ton of bugs in there. Ugh. So look at all of those fruit flies that were caught in the red wine vinegar. Now let's try the balsamic vinegar. Ugh, might be even more in there. You can see there must be at least 50 fruit flies in there, maybe closer to 100. And that should show you just how extremely effective this simple method is. And that right there is how you can quickly and easily stop a fruit fly outbreak in your kitchen. Now, if you have a really bad outbreak, you may want to use more than one shot glass. I used two and that was the perfect amount for me, but you can use three or more if your outbreak is particularly bad. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use for real in my garden, they are all linked down below my Amazon storefront in the video description. And while you're there, check out my Spreadshop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, Dale, we're working on your hungries, and Dale is getting a mozzarella cheese omelet. Look at that omelet. Who can make an omelet like that? That's almost looking French. Boy, do you have it good living here. All right, I can't take this omelet out with just one hand, buddy. I got to put my phone down. Hey Dale, you remember when you used to live in a shelter? Oh boy, have things changed for you. I just want to see how, how good this omelet looks. Oh, look at that cheese pool, Dale. Look at that cheese pool. Oh, that looks so good. I'm going to chop it up and transfer it to your bowl. Oh, and now we have, oh, now we have Dale's cheese omelet. And then we have chicken cooked in bone broth with carrots and kale from the garden and white rice. Come on, let's go to his bowl. Let's see how good this is. I'm actually kind of jealous. I'm a, I kind of want to eat this, Dale. Sit. Sit. Stay. Good boy, Dale. Okay. Oh, he's going to love it. Oh, he's been so good today. He deserves a treat like this.